first we need to think about the water content in food before measuring glass transition because dsc behavior depends on freezeable or unfreezeable water content in a food sample in the case of a sample containing unfreezeable water there is no formation of ice even cooling at very low temperature whereas ice is formed in the sample containing freezeable water in this case ice formed during cooling below 0 degree c sample with unfreezeable water is commonly considered as a high solid matrix and sample containing freezeable water is commonly considered as low solid matrix it would be good to understand the freezeable and unfreezeable water content in foods i am going to explain this more at the end of this video different techniques are used to measure the freezeable and unfreezeable water and their value significantly differs with the methods used in the case of frozen foods ice is formed and different types of water are usually defined as total water unfrozen water ice that is frozen water and unfreezeable water it can be written as xw0 equal to xwu plus xi plus xw dash i am going to define clearly these terms at the end of this video first the baseline is shifted to a second baseline the shift is considered as glass transition we could define onset glass transition temperature mid glass transition temperature and end glass transition temperature and change of a specific heat from onset and end glass transition these are commonly measured characteristics it is commonly difficult to measure glass transition in the case of a stiff molecular system compared to flexible molecular system for example the measurement of glass transitions of sugar based foods is easy as compared to starch fiber and protein based foods in the case of foods and biomaterials non horizontal baselines are observed and glass transitions observed over a wide temperature range the onset mid and end glass transition point are marked in this experiment the onset glass transition is at minus 20 degree c and the end glass transition is at 60 degree c therefore the glass transition is transformed within 80 degree temperature difference the decrease of baseline with a slope indicates that specific heat decreases due to temperature as well as other structural damage while increasing slope of the baseline indicates that a specific heat increases due to temperature as well as other structural or network formations the glass transition observed over a wide temperature indicates the slow time dependent relaxation of the sample we could also determine del cp that is a specific heat change at glass transition in this slide we could observe the glass transition of a spaghetti as measured by dsc in reality a curved corner is observed instead of a sharp corner and in this case commonly crossing points of the two lines are considered the onset and end glass transition temperature we could also determine del cp that is a specific heat change at glass transition in many instances an exothermic or endothermic peak is observed before or after the glass transition in this case we could observe an endothermic peak onset end and mid glass transitions could be determined by drawing lines as shown the area of the endothermic peak is considered as enthalpy involved the energy released could be due to the relaxation of the sample or a structural change 
or chemical reaction after glass transition. Similarly, an exothermic peak at the onset of glass transition could also be observed. Although exothermic or endothermic peak makes heat flow curve complicated, however, it clearly confirms the glass transition. In many instances, annealing close to this peak and then second scan could remove the exothermic or endothermic peak if it is a sample relaxation issue. However, sample structure and molecular characteristics could be changed after the first scan and sample may not be the same as original sample. In many instances, glass transition is difficult to trace while a sharp and deep endothermic peak is observed. In this case, rescaling is required to visualize the glass transition. I am going to show this in the next slide. In this slide, we could observe a clear glass transition region after rescaling of the heat flow axis and temperature axis. Heat flow curve during heating is commonly used to determine the thermal characteristics since there is a lag in cooling cycle. The glass transition is also affected by the heating rate and the effect of heating rate could be used to determine the structural characteristics of biomaterial. Commonly increasing heating rate increases the glass transition, that is, it shifts to higher temperature. Therefore, the heating rate must be mentioned when measuring glass transition. Commonly, a heating rate of 5 degrees C per minute or 10 degrees C per minute is used to determine the glass transition. Sensitivity and traceability of glass transition increase with the increase of heating rate. We could measure glass transition at different heating rate as shown. A curved line could be drawn. This line could be extended to zero heating rate and defined as Tg0. I am defining different types of water in frozen food as I mentioned at the beginning of this video. Unfreezable water is defined as water that does not form ice even at low temperature that is minus 40 degrees C or below. Unfrozen water is the water which could form ice at lower temperature. Frozen water is the ice content that increases with the decrease in temperature. At any temperature below freezing point, the amount of ice increased with the decrease of unfrozen water. I would like to thank you for watching this video until the end and please subscribe to our channel if you like this video.